Welcome to our course Digital Design with Medilog. In this week, we are going to discuss combinational logic design. In today's class, specifically, we will discuss encoder and decoder. These slides are prepared from the chapter 4 of Maurice Manos book and chapter 5 of Kohavi's book. Let us start with encoder. So, as the name encoder suggests, it is basically encode the input signal. So, in a encoder, uh, in an encoder, there are 2 to the power n inputs and n outputs. So, there are, if there are n outputs, it is basically uh, can uh, find out the value of 2 to the power n possible inputs, right. So, it is basically encode what input is coming uh, uh, in terms of n outputs, okay. So, uh, if I just think about a uh, 4 uh, n is 4 n is 2. So, that means there are 2 outputs and there are 4 possible inputs, right. So, d 0, d 1, d 2, d 3. So, and the output is uh, 2 bits say x and y. So, x and y can have 4 values 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, what it basically says, so this d 0 corresponding to 0, 0, d 1 is corresponding to 0, 1, d 2 is 1, 0 and d 3 is 1, 1. So, if d 0 equal to 1, so you will see that for output will be 0, 0. If uh, d 1 equal to 1, then output will be 0, 1 and so on. So, this way it will just encode the input. So, as I mentioned this uh, the output lines actually generate the binary code corresponding to the input value. So, every input has a number. So, 0 to uh, 2 to the power n. Uh, n, uh, 2 to the power n minus 1 and then output will be out of n bits. Okay. So, let us take an uh, octal to binary encoder that means there are uh, 3 output bit x, y, z and uh, the inputs possibly from 0 d 0 to d 7 where 0 means it is the first one and d 7 is the, the eighth one. Right. So, now I to develop a encoder uh, corresponding to this particular system, what I can say that if d 0 is 1 as I mentioned it will be 0 0 0, if it is d 1 is 1 then it is 0 0 1, if d 2 is 1 then it is 0 1 0 because this is 2, then d 3 is 3 so it will be 0 1 1 which is 3, d 4 1 so it is 4 so it is 1 0 0 and so on. Right. So, this way I can actually identify this and then what I can do is I can just write that z is nothing but d 1, d 3, d 5 and d 7. Similarly, this y is d 2, d 3 and d 6, d 7 and x is d 4, d 5, d 6, d 7. Right? So, this I can write. So, that can be my uh, encoder circuit. Okay? So, whenever uh, say uh, I have one of the value can be only 1, right. So, if say d 3 is 1, so then what will happen because d 3 is 1, uh, here d 3 occurs. So, z will be 1, uh, d 3 occurs in y. So, this will be 1 and there is no d 3 here to 0. So, it is basically 3. So, I will get output 3 and d 3 is the input, right. So, this way this will work as long as there is only one of the input comes. Okay. And it will malfunction whenever or the output will be not correct if multiple bit become 1. Right. So, uh, let us say your d 4 also 1 and d 2 is also 1. Right. So, if d 4 and d 2 is 1, what will happen? Because d 2 occurs here. So, this will be become 1 and uh, d 4 occurs uh, here. So, it will be 1. Right. So, you will get end up getting 1 1 0 which becomes 6 right, but you basically have either d 2 or d 4 right. So, this is something uh, assumes that only one of the input can act active one time, but if some more than one comes your output will be not correct. Okay. But in general in practice we are mostly interested in priority encoders. Okay. So, it is the same uh, philosophy that it has 2 to the power n possible input values and your n outputs, but there is a priority among these inputs. Okay. And usually if you have say 2 lines p i and p j, if i greater than j then I will say p i has more priority than 
P j. So, what I am trying to say is that if P i and P j both are 1, since i greater than j, I will give access to this, I will consider this in my previous example d 4 and d 2. So, 4 has higher priority over d 2. So, whenever uh, d 4 is 1, uh, my output should be d corresponding to d 4 which is 1 0 0, it is not corresponding to d 2. Okay? So, that is what is called priority. So, I have a priority which is uh, defined like this and then I am now going to develop this encoder which uh, satisfy this. Okay? So, again this priority encoder has this, uh, I am talking about this octal to this 3 bit binary converter, this octal to binary encoder. So, there are uh, 8 possible inputs and there are 3 outputs the similar to the earlier. I will also talk about this enable signal and Z0 letter. Let us assume that this is the primary concern of there are this and it is similar now the truth table is like this. Here what I am trying to say is that if P7 is 1 and since 7 is greater than of any other number right it is greater than of uh, this 0 to 6. So, it does not matter what are the value of other bits right. So, I will give I will consider this I will give access to 7. So, I will consider the 7th request. Right. So, if you see here in the table whenever, so this is my P 7 and this is P 0 right? and this is the order. So, whenever P 7 is 1, I do not care about the other values, right? other values can be do not care here, right? so it can be 0 or 1. So, effectively this line is uh, have 2 to the power 6 possibilities right? which is 64. right? So, this is 7 possibilities because 0 to 6, 7 possibilities, 2 to the power 7 is 128, right. So, there are 128 scenarios can actually capture by this line because this P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and P6 can have any values. So, 2 to the power 7 possible values are there. So, 128 uh, scenarios my output will be only 7 because I give maximum priority to P7. Okay. So, priority order is like this P7 has higher, higher priority over P6, then it has priority over P5, then P4, P3, P2, P1 and P0. This is the order. So, whenever P7 comes other does not matter. Okay. Now, look into the last but the second last row this one. So, here I am saying P7 is 0. Okay. So, that means there is no request through P7 line and P6 is 1 okay. and in this scenario I will not care about P0 to P5. Okay. So, again 64 possibilities will come here in all this case I will give access to P6. Okay. So, I will encode the output as 6 P6 right 110 here it is 111 right. So, this way I can uh, construct this table here I am saying that if P5 is 1 and P6 and P7 is 0 and I do not care about the value of P0 to P4, I will consider this as a request P5 and my output will be 101. Similarly, whenever P4 is 1 and P5, P6 and P7 is 0, I will give priority to P4 and I will ignore the value of P0 to P3. So, this way you can construct this table and whenever I will only give access to P0 if rest of the values are 0. So, this is only one possibilities right? that only one scenario P0 will give the access. The case is that P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 and P7 are 0 and P0 is 1. Okay? So, this way I and in this case my output will be 0, 0, 0 because I am saying this is P0 is, uh, is selected. Okay? So, this way I have completed this table. Now, I can write the expression corresponding to this uh, Z1, Z2 and Z4 which is my output. right? So, the Z1, Z2 and Z4 because I have now 1 0 values. So, for example, this uh, Z4 if I take Z4 first, Z4 is basically this scenario, this scenario and this scenario. right? So, this I can write just P7. Right. So, this is P7. So, I can write Z4. I will start with Z4. So, this is this is P7. This is uh, this one is basically P6 and uh, P7 bar. 
this one is basically P5 and P6, P7 bar, P5, P6 bar, P7 bar and this one is P4 and P5 bar, P6 bar, P7 bar. Okay. I can simplify by applying this rule that if you have x and x bar y, this is basically x plus y because if x is 1, this will be 1 and if x is 0, uh, then it depends on only y. So, x bar is not important. So, if I apply this rule here, this will become p7 plus p6. Then now, if I apply this uh, p6 and this, this term, then it will become p5 p7 bar, right. And then I can apply again this uh, p7 to this, so this 7 bar will go, right. So, and then similarly, I can also apply first um, this uh, p, uh, p5, uh, so basically if you take this and this, you will get p4, right, because this is uh, finally, you will end up getting this expression. Right. So, uh, so this will be my simplified expression corresponding to Z4 by just applying this rule repeatedly on this equation. Similarly, I can write my Z2 which is this, this, this and this. So, this is P7, uh, this one, this one is again uh, P6, P7 bar. This one is saying that P3 and then P4 bar, P5 bar, P6, P7 bar. So, this is this one. And this one is basically saying that P2 and then P3 bar, P4 bar, P5 bar, P6 bar, P7 bar, right. So, this is this one. Again, if I apply this rule, I will end up getting this expression. And similarly, Z1, I have to keep uh, these terms. This one is effectively P1 and then P2 bar, P3 bar, P4 bar, P5 bar, P6 bar, P7 bar and so on. So, I will get this expression and if I simplify, I will get this expression. So, once I get this expression, this is uh, I can just implement in very long and uh, so this uh, circuit will look like this and the implementation of very log is quite simple. So, it will have this P0 to P7 uh, inputs and Z1 to Z4 outputs that I explain here and then I just assign that value of uh, Z1, Z2, Z4 based on this equation, right. I just wrote this expression here, that is all, that is my very log implementation. And to test, uh, I can write a test bench where I will instantiate this module of this priority encoder and then uh, this is the part where I develop these clocks because I put my input as a register. So, I have to control the input uh, of this uh, input value to this register and then here I am what I am doing is randomly I am generating a value uh, up to 255, okay. So, that means since there are 8 possible input. So, 2 to the power h to 256. So, uh, the value can be ranged from 0 to 255. So, I am randomly picking the values. So, it, these numbers may have multiple ones and all and I will see whether my outputs are exact uh, as per my priority encoder, right. And I am just doing it for 10 times and then I will stop it. You can run for 255 times just to make sure that or you generate all possible values of 0 to 255 and check for completeness, okay. So, what is happening here? So, if say input is this, you can see here the order is you remember this is P0 and this is P7, right. That means this one is the highest priority. I have to always look from this side, right. So, this is 5 P6, P6, P7, P6, P5. So, output is 101, right. Whenever the P7 is 1, I do not care about this, so output is 7. Again, here is 1, 1, so I got 7, 7. Here also all cases I am getting generating some numbers where the last bit is 1 which is P7 and my output is always 7, right. Here it is this bit it is P6, so I do not care about these values, right. My output should be 6 and so on. So, I can confident that this implementation is correctly implemented the priority encoder. So, before moving to the next topic there are two more things uh, I am doing here. One is I am just adding enable, okay. So, uh, you can see here this implementation corresponding to these three equations. So, you can just look into this. So, this is corresponding to Z1 where I am just connecting this P4, P5, P6 and P7, okay. So, you can just cross check. So, it is properly connected. Uh, I just add a enable and an enable here, 
Okay, so and I if the enable equal to zero, what will happen? All my output will be zero, right? And if enable equal to one, then it does not. So it will as per uh, it will work as per the circuit functionality. So it's basically I have more control that I'll only I'll make enable equal to one when I want to use this particular design. Okay. There is one more uh, thing is I have generating here is Z0. Okay. What is this? So, what will happen if there is no request? Okay. So, then also you will uh, your output will be uh, 0 uh, in this case. right? So, because if there is no request if you put these values here you will get Z1 equal to 0, Z2 equal to 0 and Z4 equal to 0. right? So, then how do we differentiate between uh, the P0 request come and there is no request come? So, to differentiate this I just create one more output z0 okay, which is basically uh, take a negation of each values right. So, I put a NAND gate this is my NAND gate and I put p0 bar p1 bar to p7 bar here right. What does this mean? So, if, if any of the uh, value is 1 then their complement will be 0 right and then if one of the value is 0 in this NAND gate your output will be 1 right. So, what does this mean? If this Z0 equal to 1 that means there is at least one imp request is there right and if all of them are 0 and their complement will be all 1 and then output will be 0 right. So, if this is 0 Z0 is 0 it indicates that there is no request come ok. So, now I can differentiate between no request come and P0 comes ok because if P0 comes this will be 1 and output will be 0 0 0 and if P 0 does not come and none of the request come then this will be 0 and output will also 0 0 0. So, then I will ignore the other value because there is no request comes ok. So, this way this Z 0 enable me uh, to differentiate between these two scenarios. Now, I will move on to the decoder is this the opposite circuit. So, it is basically has n input and 2 to the word n output it is just the opposite of encoder ok. So, it basically uh, property is that for every combination of the input uh, only one of the output value will be 1 right. So, I have a module which will have say 2 input and it will have 4 outputs right. So, it is basically 2 to 4 right 2 to 4 decoder right. Similarly, if we have 3 inputs I will have 8 outputs then I will say it is 3 to 8 decoder or if there are 4 inputs and there will be 16 outputs then I will say it is 4 to 16 decoders ok. So, this decoder is one of the important uh, modules in digital design and it uh, can be used for many purposes. Some of the use is like um, you just route the input data to a specific output line I will talk about that that is a kind of demultiplexer which is an another version of the decoder. You can actually use this for decode memory address you just think about that this is a memory ok it has 4 locations say right and if your address this is your address line this is your address line. So, it means if you give say 0 1 that means you want to access this location right this is 0 0 location this is 0 1 location this is 1 0 location this is 1 1 location. So, you can actually based on the address line value you can go to the particular location of the memory and you can access the data right. So, also this can be used for data distribution or demultiplexing this can also use for implementing arbitrary switching function. So, we will look into that how can I implement the decoder. The decoder circuit is extremely simple because since there are n input and there are 2 to the power n output it is basically and it is encode the each values right. So, that means with n there are 2 to the power n possible min terms and it is basically each min term corresponding to one output right. So, you think about this you have only 2 inputs w and x. So, there are 4 possible values right w bar x bar w x bar and w x and what I did here is effectively I just connect this combinations right. So, this if you see here I am connecting x bar and I am connecting w bar right. So, it is basically w bar x bar here I am connecting w bar and x right here I am connecting w and x bar here I am connecting x and w right. So, if your value of w both are 0 0 right then this will be 1 
if it is 0 1 then this will be 1 if it is 1 0 this will be 1 and this, this is 1 1 then this will be 1 effectively only one of the output will be 1 at a time you cannot have a scenario where more than one output uh, is 1 for a given input because it just encode the mean terms right so this is quite simple similarly you can develop a 3 to 8 and uh, decoder easily it's basically eight possible mean terms values and each of these uh, mean terms are connecting this this combination of the inputs right so you have z x y z and their complements and you just connect them according to these values right you'll get the decoder and if uh, if you see the truth table it's basically if it is 0 0 0 then your the d0 the first line will be 1 if it is say 1 1 1 the last line will be 1 if it is say 1 0 0 then fourth line will be 1 rest of the 0 so only you can see here that only one of the output is 1 right so the implementation is basically for each output d0 which is nothing but x bar y bar z bar and so on so because this just captured this this just captured this so it is basically d1 equal to x bar y bar z and so on so this way you will basically each output is nothing but the mean term that is 0.2 okay implementation is very straightforward it has x y z as input and d0 to d7 is output this is i am implementing 3 to 8 and you just assign this value d0 is uh, this x bar y bar z bar d1 is x bar y bar z and so on right this is very simple implementation testing is similar so here uh, i again instantiate the decoder make the connections uh, of this uh, input to this input line and this output to the output lines this part is for clock generation so here what i am doing here is i am just giving all possible values so i start from 0 and i'll till 7 i'll give uh, the value so i just give 0 then i increment then i'll give 1 then i'll increment here then i'll give 2 and so on and i'll give whenever i become 8 i'll stop it and then i'll produce the output right so you can see here is that when the input is 0 0 0 output is d0 is 1 right whenever it is 0 0 1 d1 1 is 1 when 0 1 0 d2 is 1 when 0 1 1 d3 is 1 and so on so you can see here that only one of the output is 1 and the corresponding bit only right so this implements correctly my 3 to 8 decoder so now i'll talk about developing a 4 to 16 decoder using 3 to 8 decoder right so suppose i have given you uh, 3 to 8 decoder okay and i ask you to develop uh, 4 to 16 decoder so if i have not given this you could have just create for 16 possible min term and just connect them with the and gets just like this right where there will be one more w and then i'll connect them accordingly and there will be 16 such and gets right and each of the output is one bit this is possible but I am talking about here I am just uh, I have given one 3 to 8 decoder okay and with that I just uh, develop uh, I want to uh, develop this 4 to 16 decoder okay. So for do that I will just again add the enable signal to this right so I will just connect this enable to each of this get right this is my 3 to 8 decoder right this is 3 to 8 decoder. So now you can see here that if the enable is 0, all this output will be 0. So all out, so none of the bit will be 1, right? And if enable is 1, if the enable is 1, then only this will perform as per the circuit behavior, okay? Now to develop, so I have given this. So this is my 3 to 8 decoder, right? Which has x, y, z as input and I have enable signal, right? Now what I am going to do is I am going to use two times okay, and say this w is my msb and x y z is my lsb right. So for the eight first eight combination my w is 0 right and for the next so this is uh, in the next eight combination here all possible value of x y z is there and w is 1. Okay. And what I want is in this case, so I can actually use one decoder corresponding to this x, y, z value, right. So I can use uh, one decoder corresponding to this x, y, z values and I can use one more decoder here, right, 3 to 8 decoder. 
here also 1328 decoder. Now, what I will do? I will connect this W bar as the enable for this decoder, right. So, what I am doing here? I am taking W, I am taking W bar here and I am connecting to this, to this decoder. And here for this decoder, I am connecting W directly at the enable port, ok. Then what will happen? When your W is 0, then W bar will be 1. So, this particular encoder will perform as per my expectation and I am going to get the value uh, D0 to D7 because this will always give me D0 to D7 and since this 0 W is 0, so this is the I uh, this D0 means D0 right and D7 means D7. Now, whenever W is equal to 1, what will happen? 0 will come here and it will always give you 0. Right. So, this D0 to D7 output will be 0 always, I am disabling this encoder right. And since this W equal to 1 now for the second half, uh, this encoder is enable and my output will be again D0 to D7 right. It is basically D0 to D7, but I just add W as the MSP. So, then D0 become D8, D1 become D9 because see if it is 0, 0, 0, you just say D0 means 0, 0, 0, you add W here because W equal to 1. So, this become 8. You have 0, 0, 1 which is D1, you add 1 here, right. So, then it will become uh, 9, right. So, this way if you have 1, 1, 1 here which is D7, uh, you add 1 here, it will become D15, right, this is D9. So, this way effectively this will this is actually encoding D 8 to D 15 and this or none of them will be 1 when uh, this uh, this particular decoder is enabled. Similarly, when the first uh, when your W is 0, so this will be enabled this will be disabled. So, your uh, D 8 uh, this D 8 to D 15 those lines will be always give you 0 right. So, this way you will get all the value from D 0 to D 15. And I am making sure that although I am using two decoder, I will making only uh, enabling only one of the decoder for half of the inputs. As a result, I will get ex exactly the D0 to D15 in this scenario, right. I will now talk about uh, can I also develop this 4 to 16 decoder using 2 to 4 decoder, ok. It is possible, you have to just creating a switching matrix. So, what I am doing here is suppose your inputs are w, x, y and z, right. So, I will use one 2 to 4 decoder for y, z. So, it will give me 4 values, right. So, it will give you 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, which is f 0, f 1, f 2, f 3. There is one more decoder, 2 to 4 decoder, where I am going to give w, x and again you will get 4 possible values, right, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, I just club these two uh, possible output together to get D0 what I will do. So, this is my lower part and this is my upper part right because Wx is my MSBs and this is the LSBs. To create a number 0, 0, 0, 0 ok, what I will do? I will take this output F0 and this output right which is the F0 and then I will connect them in AND get, right. So, then what will happen? So, I am connecting this 0 0 here and this 0 0 here, right here. So, then what is happening? So, if it is 0 0, Wx is 0 0, then this F1 will be 1 and if uh, Yz is 0 0, then this F0 will be also 1, then I will get both 1 here and since this is AND get, the mass output will be 1. So, to create 0, 0, I will just take uh, the F0 and F0 for this 2 decoder. Similarly, what I am doing here is a matrix. So, here you can see here that all this uh, gets your F0 is connected, right, this F0 is connected and, uh, and this uh, and uh, and this in here uh, you can actually see that this F0 is connected of Wx F0 is connected here, F1 is connected here, F2 is connected here and F3 is connected here. So, what does this mean? 
this is this will this first column will give me always 0 0 and then 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 right this is 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 so basically 0 4 18 and 12 8 and 12 right so this will capture this on the other hand if you see in row wise what I am doing here in each row the first row I am connecting that 0 0 line of w x right I am connecting 0 0 line right and if you see here uh, in the second row I am connecting 0 1 line right 0 1 line I am connecting here third row I am connecting the 1 0 line right and fourth row I am connecting the 1 1 line of w x. On the other hand I am connecting this 0 0 line to the first column right. So, what I am doing here I am connecting this 0 0 line to the first column right. I am collecting the 0 1 line to the second column 1 0 line to the third column and 1 1 line to the fourth column right. So, with this effectively the first row corresponding to the w x is always 0 0 second row your w x will be always 0 1 and third row your w x will be always 1 0 and then fourth row your w x will be always 1 1 right 1 1. So, this is w x value and if you see this way in the first first row since I am connecting F0, F1, F2 and F3 to each column, I will effectively create 4 combinations of YZ, YZ right 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 right. So, this and in all these cases it will be 0, 0. So, effectively I am creating 0, 1, 2, 3. In the next row again I am connecting all F0 to F, F3 of YZ. So, effectively it will give me all 4 combinations 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and in this case it will be 0 1 0 1 0 1. So, effectively it is 4 5 6 7 right. Similarly, in the third row I uh, my uh, w x value 1 0 and again y z value will vary all possible cases right 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and w value x value will be 1 0 1 0 1 0 which is basically nothing but 8 9 10 11. Similarly, in the fourth row uh, my y z will vary from 0 0 to 0 1 1 0 1 1 and w x will remain 1 1. So, this will basically 12 13 14 15. What does this mean? Whenever your value is 1 1 1 0 this f 14 will be 1 rest of the value will be 0 right. Similarly, if it is 1 0 1 1 only f 7 value will be 1 right rest of the sorry this is 0 1 I made a mistake here. So, this is 0 1. So, this is effectively uh, 0 1. So, it is 7 right. So, 7 is this one. So, you, you can actually see that this encoding of 0 to 15 in this table and only one of the value will be 1 because these are AND gate connected there right. So, only uh, if both of them is 1 then only that particular AND gate will be 1. So, in this case also only one of the F 0 to F 15 output will be 1 uh, because it is just ending 2 possible values and both the possible value is only one uh, only one scenarios ok. So, this way I can just use 2 to 4 2 decoders and 16 AND gate to uh, get a 4 to 16 decoder ok. So, next I will discuss decimal decoder it is the same like decoder in a decoder I mentioned that if there are uh, 2 to the power n possible input and n output. So, in a decoder as I mentioned if there are 4 inputs there are 16 outputs right. Now, in a now I am going to discuss decimal decoder. In the decoder I have discussed that uh, in a decoder of uh, 4 input there are 16 outputs, okay. but if you think about the decimal number you number is from 0 to 9 right. So, there are 10 numbers 10 outputs. So, the scenario uh, from this 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 those are not going to occur in decimal number ok. So, I can utilize those uh, values as do not care 
to minimize this expression. Okay. So, what I am doing here is again I have 4 inputs w x y z, but I do not have output from f 0 to f 15, right? I have only f 0 to f 9 and this represent my decimal number 0, this represent my decimal number 9 and so on, right? So, this 10 to 15 are the do not cares. Again, I can utilize this do not care to minimize this uh, decoder function. What we have seen are that it is a complete decoder, then we just add a AND gate and add all the variables either in normal form or complement form uh, and I will get the output. It is AND gate represent one mean term, right. So, here uh, because this f 10 to f 15 does not occur, I will use them to reduce the size of this f 0 to f 9 AND gate, okay. How? I know that if it is 0 0 then it is f 0, this is if it is 0 0 0 1 this is f 1, if it is 0 0 1 0 it is f 2. So, this way I just write f 0, f 1, f 2, f 3, f 4, f 5, f 6, f 7, f 8 and f 9. This is f 9 because it is 1 0 0 1, right. So, this way I got this and the rest of the terms are do not care, right. So, these are the do not care terms. So, ideally earlier I cannot club with anybody because all of them are getting used. So, I just wrote that f 0 is nothing but w bar, x bar, y bar and z bar, right. Now, uh, I can club this do not care with this, right. So, for example, earlier I wrote f 8 uh, is w, x bar, y bar, z bar, right. Now, I, I can see that there is a do not care here and there are two do not care here, right. So, I can club this two and this two and I can write f 8 equal to um, that w and z bar, right. So, instead of writing w bar x bar y bar z bar, I can just write w and z bar, okay. So, this way I uh, minimize this f 8 f 0 cannot be combined with anybody. So, f 0 will be as it is, f 1 will be as it is because it cannot be combined with anybody, f 3 can be combined with this and I will end up getting a 3 literal and get instead of 4 literal. Similarly, f 2 can be combined with this, f 6 can be combined here, f 7 can be combined here, f 5 can be combined here, f 4 can be combined like this, f 8 I have combined 4, similarly f 9 can be combined 4 right, this 4 can be combined. So, this way I will get uh, much simpler expression corresponding to this outputs, okay. And this is my the circuit, you can see here that f 0 cannot be combined with anybody. So, there are 4 literals, right. So, this is the enable signal. Whereas, in f 9, as I mentioned that f 9 can be combined like this. So, it will effectively 2 literal, 2 literal is reduced. So, there are only 2 literals, right, which is uh, you can say that this is w z, right. So, you can see you can just see that it is w z. Similarly, f 8 also combined uh, 4 uh, cubes. So, it will again have 2 literals. f 7 I mentioned that it will combine this way. So, it will have 3 literal. You can see that there are 3 literals. So, instead of 4 literals, you have 3 literals now. And this way, I just minimize this uh, output and get size using kernel map, okay. So, this is uh, just the uh, decoder 4 to uh, uh, 16 decoder, but for decimal, right. So, I will just have 4 to 10 decoder, not 4 to 16, and I have utilized the don't care to reduce the size of the uh, gates. I can also realize uh, any function uh, using do getter uh, in a decoder, it is quite obvious because in a decoder I have all the min terms as output, right. So, uh, for 4 to 16. I have all possible 16 min terms are uh, there. So, if uh, there is a function say f which is have min term 1, 5, 9 and 15, I just connect f 1, f 9, f 5 and n 15 to a or get and that will be my f. How this will work? If say the input is 0, 0, 0, 1 which is basically 1. So, then this f 1 will be 1, my output will be 1 because this is or get. If the input is uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, so this is 5, so then f 5 will be 1, rest of the values will be 0, right. Since f 5 is connected here, this output will be also 1. 
Similarly, when it is 1 0 0 1 uh, f 9 will be 1 and rest of the value will be 0, but still my output of R gate will be 1 right for f 9 also 1 and for f 15 it is 1 1 1 1. So, this f 15 will be 1 rest of the value from 0 to f 14 is 0, but f 14 f 15 is connected to this OR gate. So, my output will be 1 here also right. So, but it will be uh, whenever you are giving say 6 right uh, 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 then f 6 is 0 right f 1 f 5 f 9 m 15 are 0. So, all zeros are connected here. So, my output will be 0. So, what does it mean? If any other mean term is coming other than f 1 5 uh, 9 and 15 uh, my OR gate output will be 0. So, this is what is the behavior of this function right. So, under all this particular mean terms this will be 1 and rest of the time it will be 0. So, this way I can just connect the corresponding mean term in a OR gate and I can implement any function of n variables if there are n output in uh, sorry n input to this encoder ok to this decoder sorry. So, I will conclude uh, the version of the decoder which is called uh, D multiplexer. It is the same circuit what I exactly do here that I just uh, direct one input data to one of the output line ok. So, if it is a 3 to 8 decoder there will be 8 outputs and whenever it is say 0 0 0 I will just pass the actual input to that 0 0 line ok and so on which is uh, very simple to implement. So, what I can just do I can just add this x which is the actual input to all the AND gates right. So, this uh, the example drawn here is 2 to uh, 2 to 4 decoder. So, this is basically 0 0 this is 0 1 this is 1 0 and this is 1 1 gate and I have just added this x gate. So, if this uh, input line is 0 0 say then this will be 1 this will be 1 right because this is uh, not of them are connecting and then the x whatever the value of x that will be the output. So, then I will say this x is passing to the output. Similarly, if c 1 c 2 is 0 1 then this both will be 1 right because here I can see that c 1 bar is connected right. So, then this will become 1. Then this output of this AND gate will depend on value of x. So, f x if x equal to 1 output will be 1 if x equal to 0 output will be 0. So, then I will say actually x is passing to the output and similarly here also if it is 1 0 then x will pass to the output here if the value is 1 1 then x will pass to the output. So, I am demultiplexing the x uh, through one of the input channel ok. So, it is basically just connecting this x to the uh, all the mean term and get and automatically the value of x will be the output right. So, it is not the 1 rather the value of the x ok in that particular line. So, effectively this x is moving to that particular line ok using demultiplexer. This is one more application of decoder. So, with this I conclude today's class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.